Today, I thought I would talk to you about my passion outside of politics, which is uh, rolling around with sweaty men in warehouses. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. Um, no, I'm talking about martial arts and fitness, um, which I think is something that the right should be pursuing more of um, because they are the embodiment of our values in a very real and raw sense. Um, but before we begin, I'll point you towards this interview that Josh did with uh, David Rodriguez, a heavyweight boxing champion. Mm -hmm. um, he starts, um, he's gone into politics now, mm. and it would be um, quite interesting to see what people make of it because you know, he's a very successful boxer. Uh, there's no denying that. And it's interesting to see people willing to go from positions of success mm. into politics and wade in into controversies more and more. Mm. It's a, a very heartening thing to see. And he's obviously doing a very good job of it too. Yes. Well, the, the Venn diagram of um, fighters and <laughs> rightists is basically a circle. Um, and I, th I don't think that's any surprise either because um, the kind of values and qualities that martial arts cultivate as you practice them, um, it makes it basically impossible to not be right wing because it puts you in touch with the rawest elements of human nature. Um, and I don't know if you still believe in things like the fundamental equality of man after doing a jujitsu session, then <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, as I say, this is my passion outside of politics. Um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is my main sport. So here is me and my, my pal having a little... Looks like he's going to give you a little kiss a on the head. Then. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he did win that fight, I'll be honest, um, because he's about 20 kilograms heavier than me. <laughs> uh, here's the cope already. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, the sort of um, values that martial arts uh, cultivate in you are inherently right wing. Um, they because they it's all about hierarchy. It's about quality. It's masculine. Um, it's about discipline, um, and it's a kind of sort of meditative, spiritual thing for me at least, and I think for most guys who practice them, um, because it really does put you in touch in this it, it, with the kind of rawest um, experience of what it is to be a man in particular. I think it, one of the main benefits for people who might potentially take it up mm. is that in being able to defend yourself, mm. it completely changes how you look at the world. There was a time before I knew how to fight because I do boxing yeah. and I'd noticed a difference the better and better I got at boxing, mm -hmm. which is like, I don't need to worry about these things. I started yeah. being more and more comfortable basically yeah. saying to people who were doing terrible mm. things in, in public, for example, oi, cut that yeah. out. Yeah. Like I, I saw a, a shoplifter running down the street mm -hmm. and I actually intervened. Yeah, uh, this was quite recently, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hit him on the head with my umbrella, actually, yeah. which is about the most English way to intervene <laughs> as possible. What a gentleman. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's, uh, as I said, it's impossible to not be right wing when you do this because I, I kind of contrast. So I've, I've been at university. I only recently finished university. Um, and I contrast the, the gym with the seminar room, for example. Because in the seminar room, you're talking about high-minded ideals, abstract thought, and all the rest of it. And the way I got this really distinct feeling that um, it's almost like there's a kind of gulf between reality and what you're doing when you're doing that. Um, and I've got plenty of time for talking about high-minded, abstract ideals. Um, but there is, I think, if you live your life in that kind of environment, you do become this kind of weird, atrophied, complacent um, person who doesn't really have who's not really in touch with their own nature. Well, I think experience is the best teacher, isn't mm. it? And you can talk about something in abstraction, but to actually experience it and, and have your subjective experience as close as possible to the objective reality, mm. although you can never know it, of course, yeah. is, is the best way to get an understanding of something mm. because looking at something from afar, just the distance alone is enough yeah. to mislead you mm. and give you a false impression. But on the, other, yeah, on the other hand, if you are underneath a 100 kilogram man who's trying to kill you as i was in those pictures um i don't know it's a very different experience um and it sort of teaches you things about yourself that you can't learn in any other context um so as i said the right wing values that it cultivates spiritual transcendence the pursuit of excellence uh discipline um and it is i mean fundamentally it's about violence and i don't think we should be scared of violence particularly as men because violence is as they say, the supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. Um, and I think being scared of What's violence... What's that from again? Oh, you disappoint me. <laughs> I, I recognize it. That's yeah. why I'm asking. I recognize it, but I can't... Is it's that Monty uh, Python, is it? No, it's Starship Troopers. Oh. oh. 
I, I was thinking of the peasant in mm. Holy Grail. That sounds like something they would yeah. say. But no, you're right. I watched yeah. Starship Troopers recently as yeah. well. So oh, that's classic. where I got it from. Absolute classic. Also true. Um, but I think being scared of violence is a, it's a, it's a vice in a way. I think it's a bad thing because I think that violence is an inescapable aspect of the human experience. Even if you don't go to, literally go to war, it's always going to be something that you experience in your life. Um, and I think being understanding it, being in touch with it, having experience with it in a controlled setting like this is an extremely beneficial thing for your character. I think, um, sorry to, to mm. cut you off, but if you are prone to anxiety, mm. uh, the best thing for you actually is getting in the ring and mm -hmm. doing a bit of sparring or something. Absolutely. Or, uh, I don't know necessarily what the jujitsu equivalent mm. is. Rolling. Yeah. Rolling, yeah. Doing something like that where you're in a situation that isn't quite a proper fight. Mm but it feels like one, gives your normal life a lot of perspective. When you can take a punch to the face, for example, in my, my boxing yeah. scenario, which uh, I've done plenty of times, mm. all of a sudden being stressed about work yeah. it seems so inconsequential. Mm. It's, it's not physical pain, it's yeah. just psychological. And yeah. So you can control it and it, it helps foster this stoicism mm. in you. As long as you stick at it, you don't give up. Yeah, well, Which I, is the essential thing. I particularly enjoy training in the mornings because I think I come out of the session. I think I've already done the hardest, most stressful thing I'm going to do today. Everything else is, you know, don't even have to think about it. Um, but we're going to move on to looking at the sort of uh, the politics of MMA and the UFC in particular, um, because there has been a trend um, of here we are. MMA fighters, professionals, um, becoming right wing political activists. And I don't think this is surprising at all. Again, given the kind of qualities that martial arts cultivates. I don't think it's any surprise at all that guys like Jorge Masvidal or, uh, or others are kind of um, getting into politics or indeed uh, the chap that you interviewed. Um, so, for example, as I just said, yeah, Jorge, oops, Jorge Masvidal um, campaigning with Trump Jr. Um, with an organization called Fighters Against Socialism. Um, Incredibly based. I know. Fun. Yeah. But again, I think the, the crucial <clears throat> detail is that martial arts and fighting really does show you that the idea that equality is the fundamental sort of truth is just nonsense. Um, fundamental truth is the reach of your arm, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And it's hierarchy as well, because particularly in something like jiu-jitsu, um, if your opponent is better than you, they will beat you every time. Like, there's no element of chance. <clears throat> I think in, in boxing, now I've, I've never actually done boxing specifically, but I do uh, like Muay Thai. Um, in boxing, there is that kind of puncher's chance. Like there is the chance that you land a lucky hit and your opponent mm -hmm. just goes down. Whereas in something like jujitsu, if your opponent is better than you, he beats you every time. And that's a very humbling and uh, I think important experience for every man to have, to understand that you're not invincible, that you're not um, infallible, and that you can actually be defeated by someone who's better than you. And it can motivate you to get better. I think that's a really powerful thing. Mm -hmm. No, I very much agree. And I mm. also like that element of random chance in boxing because it keeps it exciting. You yes. can never be complacent. Yeah. If you feel like you're better than someone, they can still land a, a lucky hit mm -hmm. on you and make you feel it. And yeah. so you can never re rest on your laurels. You always have mm. to be vigilant. I think that, that that element of it is very good. Of yeah. course, not saying that happens in jiu-jitsu either, mm. but more so perhaps in boxing. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, it's no surprise that Masvidal is... Uh, part of an organization called Fighters Against Socialism because he is a Cuban-American. So he knows better than most about the uh, evils of that particular ideology. Um, but other than him, there's also Chuck Liddell, pictured here with uh, Ted Cruz. Um, <laughs> He's brave standing next to the Zodiac Killer there. Indeed, yeah. And uh, there's also Sean Strickland, who uh, said some very, very funny things recently. Like, for example, uh, this. Go back to like taking women out of the workforce, and, and maybe that's and, and maybe that is where we maybe that's where we you guys we let women vote. No offense, but it, we, but let me tell, no no I want to tell you guys something. Think about America prior to women voting. They try to ban alcohol. I don't even drink, but I'm not trying to ban alcohol. So what you did, man, you let these women come in the workforce. Now we make less money. You got kids raising themselves on TikTok. We need to go back to like 1942. You know, especially after, you know, maybe 1958 after he f***ed up the Germans. We need to put women back in the kitchen. We need to take <laughs> Only one man needs to be working. So I think as a collective man group, we need to elect somebody that's going to put women back in the kitchen, put one man working, weighs the rages, and build a wall. Have you ever thought about going to therapy, Sean? For what? <laughs> I just... <laughs> 
Go <laughs> back to like what a loaded question from the interview. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying, but it's hilarious mm. all the same. Yeah. Now uh, I don't. I, I think that. I mean, it's it's probably a temperamental thing that a UFC fighter like Sean Strickland is prone to saying things that are outrageous and controversial. But if you watch him in interviews, I think he genuinely does. He is a pretty traditional guy in his mm -hmm. views and beliefs, which again is no surprise, given that martial arts will um, lead you to think in that way. Yeah, well, it, it's a, a fighter's mindset is like one for warfare, isn't it? So mm. there's nothing more traditional than that. Yeah, that, that was the mainstay of men. Mm -hmm. Now we're uh, sitting behind computers and yeah. in office in an work. air-conditioned office. Yeah, the yeah. hardship. Yeah, indeed. But no, on that, I do think the in the modern world, you have to impose um, those kinds of experiences on yourself, which is why I think that practicing martial arts and even just lifting like fitness in general is such a crucial thing to be doing I think just anything that puts you through your physical difficulty yes. but isn't insurmountable mm. physical difficulty is yeah. great that's part of the reason i like going wild camping is mm. that it's harsh it's difficult particularly up on dartmoor where yeah. the weather's quite unforgiving at times yeah but it's you versus the world you mm. versus nature and surviving yeah and the difficulty of it leaves you coming away feeling like wow i, I really can survive out there yeah. and Although it was difficult, I really enjoyed it. It's so fulfilling. And that's the important thing is fulfillment. Yes. In, in this day and age, many men don't feel very fulfilled. Mm -hmm. This might well be a good avenue for you if you're feeling apathetic and miserable. Um, and it can't hurt that it's a good outlet for anger as well if you're annoyed. Yeah. Obviously, you know, don't uh, beat someone. The, the don't living. fight club it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> don't, don't hurt someone deliberately. Mm. But in a controlled environment, mm. some controlled aggression will make you feel a lot better. Yeah. It's a fulfillment that you can't get from anything else. No. Every man needs a hobby like that. A physical hobby. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think self... It, there's a, I do sometimes have the sense that the kind of self-imposed nature of um, training martial arts is kind of makes it a little bit uh, artificial in a way. Um, but I still think that it's better than nothing. You know, as opposed to if the world was imposing the need to fight on you. I think most things these days are artificial. If yeah. you get picky about artifice, then yeah. you're going to be forever unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but moving on then, um, there are explicit sort of um, articles on places like The Guardian calling the UFC out for being the, the, uh, the sports arm of the MAGA regime. That's, uh, an, that's just a hilarious headline all yeah. around there. I know. <laughs> They say that no other American sports league has invested as much time and effort as the UFC has in promoting Trump during the election. The alarming trend of UFC fighters and officials campaigning for the incumbent president, including spreading propaganda and disinformation, emphasizes how the promotion has embraced its role as the sports arm of Trump's political ideology. It's a bit rich coming from The Guardian, isn't it? Spreading propaganda Quite right. in a biased way. Yeah, indeed. Um, <clears throat> but again, you know, a guy like Dana White, with the kind of background and history he has, He's not going to be a Democrat, <laughs> you know. He's not going to be a, a like a bleeding heart rainbow flag leftist. I don't know why this is any surprise. Um, and uh, then you also have the kind of the interesting phenomenon of like high level business people um, doing these sports as well. Like for example, Mark Zuckerberg, which I just find hilarious. He's, he's the last guy you'd expect to be doing these kinds of sports. He's got that weird Android strength. I bet. Yeah, I bet he does. But yeah. I think that a lot of um... You see a lot of very wealthy people taking up martial arts. Mm -hmm. I think a bunch of them now do it. Yeah. But it goes to show that even with all their money, they are still doing something that ultimately is accessible to any working mm -hmm. person. Yeah. You know, it's not that expensive a hobby to, to adopt. Yeah. And I think Mark Zuckerberg in particular doing this is particularly interesting because he's a guy who is in that kind of environment that I was talking about before. Now, obviously, he's not in a seminar room, but he's in offices talking about tech and working with engineers all day. Very abstract sort of um, intellectual work. Um, I don't think it's any surprise that he has found himself needing an outlet like this. And he does jujitsu as well, um, as you can see in this picture here. Um, and is, by all accounts, actually very good at it. Like he won, I think he's, he got a gold and, and a silver medal uh, a couple of competitions last year. Um, so yeah, I imagine talking to nerds all day does make you want to choke people yeah, out. Yeah, no doubt. Um, <laughs> But it, this article says that he has embraced a martial arts view of the world, which I think is a really, it's a really interesting phrase, that, because that, that is a thing. And uh, I mean, I think that's what you were talking about when you said that um, training boxing has made you walk around differently, see the world differently. 
Um, because that is what it will cause, you know, if you, if you do it, it will cause you to think that way. Um, the article says that to some degree, well, he said uh, on the Joe Rogan experience, Zuckerberg, he said to some degree, MMA is the perfect thing because if you stop paying attention for one second, you're going to end up on the bottom. And, you know, he's right. And that's, I think that that's a mindset that can be quite easily applied to business, that you always have to be on the ball, um, that it is a kind of, it's a kind of abstract fight in a way. Um, and I think politics is the same. Um, you also see the CEO of PayPal um, doing Krav Maga for similar reasons. Uh, he says, I've done martial arts almost all my life, and that's informed not just fighting, uh, but also living skills as well. It's been an important part of how I think about why both, uh, about both living in general and work, and it informs my philosophy there. So uh, in, in this martial art, is there a, a process of deplatforming people? Because he, he's known for doing that. Not Probably not him personally, but his company at least. Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have thought we, so somehow, but we were just talking about Zuckerberg. So I, I mean, I don't know why I'm singling this guy out when they're both just as guilty. Mm. Well, that is the interesting thing about these guys um, doing, you know, having the history they do with censorship and deplatforming, and yet they pursue a hobby like martial arts. Now, I'm not necessarily that's quite a strange connection to make, but I think that if you, again, if you do martial arts, you do have this understanding um, of human nature that just it pushes you towards a kind of right wing traditional view of the world. I think also that when you understand the nature of violence, mm. words all of a sudden seem less significant. Yes. Absolutely. So it's actually a good thing that these tech CEOs are doing this because yeah. um, if they still have any sway over their own companies, they might um, potentially push it more towards that direction if, yeah. we're, if we're lucky. I mean, yeah. don't hold your breath, but mm. it, it might give them some perspective. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. So why should you train martial arts? Well, there's the kind of utilitarian reasons, which are it's a useful skill, um, it gets you fit, um, and it's uh, fun, basically. Um, and I think those are good reasons to start. Um, I mean, what use is fitness if you can't sort of apply it? That's the, I, I do have this a sort of a certain, I don't know. I, I don't like people who just lift just to lift. You know, I think that you should apply your strength to, to some kind of pursuit. Um, and I think that martial arts are probably the best way to apply it because it's literally learning how to defend yourself and, and kill other people. Well, uh, allow me to, to say this then. Mm. I've, I've been to the gym quite a lot over the years. I know you can't tell anymore. I don't go... Oh, <laughs> come on, Josh. You look I don't really right. go that much anymore. I mean, I do the boxing, I do running and stuff like that mm. and you know, outdoorsy stuff. But going to the gym can be very boring because you're just mm. doing the same thing over and over again. Whereas something like this, a martial art, yeah. combat sport more generally... Yeah. Is really engaging because you're engaging both your mind and your body. Yes. And um, if you're getting all Buddhist mm. um, on this perspective, you want the two to be in sync with one another. Yes. Um, if you're just working your body and switching off your brain, mm -hmm. or just using your brain and switching off your body, you're going to feel a bit disconnected from the other. But you're one in the same. You are your brain and your body. Yeah. And you want those two things to, to be in sync with one another. And I think that. Um, with something like fighting, you've got to keep the mental composure. There are lots of things you've got to balance as well as just physical ability yes. all at once that puts you in a good place to um, be psychologically healthy. Mm. Ultimately. Well, that's what I was going to go on to say, actually, is, you know, it is, it is a physical pursuit, but it is also very much a mental pursuit. Like jujitsu, a jujitsu uh, fight is like a game of chess. <clears throat> you know, you have to be thinking four or five moves ahead um, and it forces you to think in this strategic kind of moment to moment way. Like when you're, again, when you're underneath a 100 kilogram guy, your mind isn't wandering, thinking about, oh, what am I going to have for dinner later? What, what work have I got to do tomorrow? No, you are present in that moment right then and nothing else exists. And, and that is, again, it's just an, an incredible experience to have because um, nothing else can give you that. And so that sort of gets us onto the, I think the really powerful reason to train martial arts, which is the kind of spiritual transcendence side of it. Um, you add, like Julius Evola actually talks about this in Metaphysics of War, about how the kind of individualistic pursuit of martial arts is a, it's a route to spiritual transcendence um, that is so rare in the modern world. Um, and I think that the reason for that is because it does uh, put you in touch with your body in a way that nothing else does. Um, and it forces you to uh, pursue excellence because if you don't, you are going to get beaten basically mm -hmm. every single time. Um, it's that kind of, again, that kind of presence in the moment as well is something that is, uh, again, it's not something you can find anywhere else. I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I also would add the mm. Petersonian thing of mm. ascending the hierarchy. Yes. That's very good for you. If you feel like mm. you're improving yourself, yeah. you're getting better and better, and you feel like you're sort of moving up in the world, at least in one area, it will make you feel a lot better yes. about yourself as well as the yeah. world around you. Strong lobster. <laughs> but it, you know it, it, that is a really tangible thing in martial arts as well because if you if you keep getting beaten by a guy and then one day you beat him oh wonderful feeling amazing feeling but the final reason is because you might need it one day um, because the dysgenic foot soldiers of the regime might come after you and uh, I think it would be wise to be prepared for that incident because it's not going to take much to take these people down um, so uh, well yeah. a lot of the time when you get attacked it's multiple people as well so if you know what you're doing which you will need to if you're taking on multiple people yes then you stand a better chance. Yes. So in sum, learn to fight, get fit, um, enjoy it, and uh, we will win. If you've enjoyed that segment from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters, why not visit our website, where you can get the podcast live, uncensored, in full and for free from one o'clock UK time every weekday. And while you're there, for as little as £5 a month, you can access all of our paywalled premium content, such as Dan's series Brokenomics, where in this episode, he speaks to billionaire investor Rob Herzog about the sorry state of South Africa. If you'd like to see the rest of what Dan's putting out on a weekly basis, you can follow Dan on Twitter at at KingBingo underscore and the rest of us over over at at lotuseaters underscore com. Until next time, goodbye.